give thanks to you O Lord among the people I will sing praises to you among the nation for your steadfast love is great he is great to the heavens and your faithfulness your faithfulness to who the clouds Me. This mass is offered for the soul of Michael on his first death anniversary offered by Fatima Raj, Sasikala Jesse family. For the intentions of Bindu Nibin and family and for the Legion of Mary's English intention. <clears throat> In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and seek the Lord's pardon. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Show favor, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace that made fervent in hope, faith, and charity. They may be ever watchful in keeping your commands through O Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The first reading from the book of Exodus 33, 7 to 11 and 34, 5b to 9 and 28. The Lord spoke to Moses face to face, a reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, Moses used to take the tent and pitch it outside the camp, far off from the camp, and he called it the tent of meeting. And everyone who sought the Lord would go out to the tent of meeting, which was outside the camp. Whenever Moses went out to the tent, all the people would rise up, and each would stand at his tent door and watch Moses until he had gone into the tent. When Moses entered the tent, the pillar of cloud would descend and stand at the entrance of the tent, and the Lord would speak with Moses. And when all the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the entrance of the tent, all the people would rise up and worship each at his tent door. Thus the Lord used to speak to Moses face to face, as a man speaks to his friend. When Moses turned again into the camp, his assistant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, would not depart from the tent. And Moses proclaimed the name of the Lord. The Lord passed before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord, a merciful, a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness, keeping steadfast love for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, 
but who will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children and the children's children to the third and the fourth generation. And Moses quickly bowed his head towards the earth and worshipped. And he said, If now I have found favour in your sight, O Lord, please let the Lord go in the midst of us, for it is a stiff-necked people, and pardon our iniquity and our sin, and take us for your inheritance. So he was there with the Lord for forty days and forty nights. He neither ate bread nor drank water, and he wrote on the tablets the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm. Response would be, the Lord is compassionate and gracious. The Lord is compassionate and gracious. The Lord does just deeds, gives full justice to all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses and his deeds to the children of Israel. Response, the Lord is compassionate and gracious. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and rich in mercy. He will not always find fault nor persist in his anger forever. Response, the Lord is compassionate and gracious. He does not treat us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our faults. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so strong his mercy for those who fear him. Response, the Lord is compassionate and gracious. As far as the east is from the west, so far from us does, the, does he remove our transgressions. As a father has compassion on his children, the Lord's compassion is on those who fear him. Response? The, the Lord, Lord is compassionate and gracious. Please stand for the acclamation. Hallelujah. Ah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. The seed is the word of God. Christ is the sower. All who come to him will live forever. Hallelujah. 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 The Lord be with you and, and with, with your spirit. spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory, Glory to, to you, o Lord. Lord. At that time, Jesus left the crowds and went into the house. And his disciples came to him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the son of man. <clears throat> the field is the world. And the good seed is the sons of the kingdom. The weeds are the sons of the evil one. And the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are gathered and burned with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom, and all causes of sin and all lawbreakers or thrown them into the fairy furnace. In that place there will be weeping and gashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who hears, let him hear. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, full of metaphors, full of similes, full of personification, the gospel of today is of that kind. A simile is a word in English grammar referring to something like something. 
For example, I am like a flower. You are like a star. So, like. This is called simile. A metaphor is a something referring to a word that makes a person in connection with something. For example, dog and the stone. If you see a statue, the statue of a dog, the dog is not there, statue is there or a stone is there. But if you see what the stone is, there is a dog. This is called metaphor. Personification is something very beautiful where Jesus would say, I am the good shepherd or I am the living bread. One personifies in somebody else or something else. So while explaining the gospel, great master, Jesus, guru, rabbi, tells the people very plainly about the, the parable, the parable of the word. What does he say? Explain the parable of the weeds of the field. Field, weeds, wheat. These are three realities connected to one another. When there is a field, there is a seed. When there is a seed, there is a harvest or yielding or wheat. So wheat, wheeled, uh, wheat field and seed. There is one thing more that is called weed. W-E-E-D, weed. Weed refers to thorns and thistles which are unwanted for the land, for a farmer, for people. As you sow weed, uh, as you sow wheat, there are so many weeds coming up along with the crop. So yesterday we reflected about how Jesus was talking about the uh, parable of the weed. Today he explains word by word saying, the one who sows the good seed is a son of man. So son of man here is referred to the Messiah, Jesus Christ. So he sows the good seed. Now what does he say? The field is the world. As the sixth fear says, the world is a stage. Every one of us are actors. So here the Lord would say, the field is the world. The world, the globe itself is a field for yielding for harvest. Very beautiful. The field is the world. So two things we have seen. One is the good seed, okay, is the son of man. Look at this. It is not only the son of man sowing the seed, but rather uh, the good seed itself is the son of man. This is something metaphor, as I would say. All right? Or you can call it even a personification. The Lord is personified in the form of a seed. Son of man is personified in the form of a seed. Okay? What kind of seed? Good seed. So, it is a son of man. Remember John 1.14. The word was made flesh. So, it is the word that seed is sown in the womb of Mary. Now, the seed grows and eels delivered in the form of Son of Man, Jesus Christ, as a child. Now you got it. The good seed is the Son of Man. The seed is the Son of Man. And the yielding is the Son of Man, from the Son of Man. The kingdom of God is the Son of Man. What all beautiful things can we grasp from one word? Okay. So the one who sows the good seed is the son of man and he himself also seed that we can understand. The field is a world that I have already told you. <clears throat> and the good seed is the sons of the kingdom. Again we understand something different. The good seed is the sons of the kingdom. If you have a good children, 
I repeat, if your children are good, they are good seeds in the field of the world. Each seed is called to bear fruit. That is why your children are called to be good seeds. Now question is, do you have good seeds in your family? Are your children good seeds? But unfortunately, all children are not good for parents except some families. Because there can be a black sheep in every family. It is said in English, there is a black sheep in every house. Black sheep would mean one who troubles or one who is a troubled or one who becomes a wicked in many aspects. So, the Lord would say, the good seed is the sons of the kingdom of God. So if we, you and I are all called to be sons of the kingdom of God, good seeds that we can be sown in the world and bear fruit. Now comes the fourth aspect, or fourth thing. The weeds are the sons of the evil one. Wherever there is a good one, holy one, there is an evil one. There is an evil one. What's that? Here it is. The weeds are the sons of the evil one. Well, as I told you yesterday, as the tree, so the fruits. If the parents are good, okay, if the parents are good, the children born for them will be good, not only the fruits, the fruits that contain good seeds. I'm sure you're able to understand. The weeds are the sons of the evil one. If the parents are wicked, bad, evil and so on, by default, one or two children would become evil in themselves. That is why we find in the society, children, <clears throat> many children are not in good books with the Lord himself. <clears throat> And the enemy who sowed them is the devil. Evil one, devil. As God, there is a devil. So devil is a personification of darkness. Devil is a personification of death. Devil is a personification of ugly. Des uh, devil is a personification of uh, unholy uh, things. So how do I explain devil? It is not only the devil that comes in the form of a spirit with a black dress or white dress at night around 2 o'clock or 12 o'clock, whatever it is. It is not the one that I am referring to, a devil that comes in the, uh, in the hard breeze at night, but rather it is something innate in everyone. When we are born, we are born with the evil one because we are born with the sin of our first parents, that is atoned and uh, cleansed in the sacrament of baptism. However, still the evil one sows wicked seeds, bad seeds, ugly seeds, um, thorny seeds into the minds of children and thus how we grow with the evil way. So, who is the one who is sowing wicked seed? It is a devil as per the Lord. Now, another um, uh, metaphor. The harvest is the end of the age. The harvest is the end of the age. How do we understand the harvest is the end of the age? A little different, little uh, harder to explain. The harvest. Harvest is nothing but yielding. When you sow a seed, it uh, yields crop, isn't it? Yield grains. And it yields a fruit. It heals the vegetable. So what happens here, the Lord says, the harvest is the end of the age, means at the end of the age, all would be gathered. All would be gathered like a harvest. Uh, and the Son of Man would be segregating the evil from the wicked. This is what the Lord would say. Right? Let's go for a couple of words and end our reflection. And the reapers are angels. So here again, it is a very semantic thought. It is a Jewish thought. 
it is not a Christian thought, it is a Jewish thought which has been already existing in the minds or in the theology of the Jews, Judaism. Because Judaism believed in the hell and heaven. That continued in our Christian thought. So most of our Christian theology is drawn from the Judaism. Whatever that has been spoken and written in the Judaic book like Torah always reflect in our Christian life and Christian theology and teaching. Now, the Lord tells us, just as the weeds are gathered and burned with the fire, so will it be at the end of the age, as I was talking to you. It's called eschatological age, eschatological. Eschaton in Greek would mean end. So there is an end for everything. There is an end for everyone. So the world also might come to an end, not now, maybe according to the Lord's mind any time. So the Lord would say, so will it be at the end of the age. This particular teaching has been taught by Jesus Christ to the people in order to have a repentance from the people. This is the goal of Jesus. This is the vision of Jesus. This is the objective of Jesus teaching all this beautiful parable explanation. What does he want? He wants a repentance. What does he want? He wants the people to become holy. What does he want? He wants the people to uh, receive salvation. Salvation rendered by the blood and the death of Jesus Christ. So the Son of Man will send his angels and they will gather out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all lawbreakers and throw them into the fiery furnace. So Jesus concludes saying, you know, my brothers and sisters, people of God, repent, repent become holy, become good, become kindly, kind, become merciful, become happy, be, become cheerful, become forgiving, become more human, become compassionate, and be what? Angels of God. This is the meaning what the Lord would say. So in that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is another uh, semantic thought. Gnashing of teeth, where will be the teeth in hell? Who will have a teeth uh, with us? When we are dead, we are gone, our bodies are buried, including teeth and hair, everything is decomposed and decayed and lost. Where are the teeth? This is a semantic thought. It is an image, this is an allegory. Literal teeth will not be found, literal fire will not be found, literal uh, destruction will not be found, but rather absence of God's love, absence of uh, the Lord's light. So all those who commit sin in the world would end up in darkness, end up in total vacuum where they will not experience God and, and a light. That's the meaning. Then the righteous will shine like the sun, as I told you, in the kingdom of their father, he who has ears, let him hear. Let him hear. Those who are God grasping capacity, those who are able to live with that accordingly, they are the one blessed. So I have, I have uh, explained to you what the Lord has explained. It is not, uh, I'm giving something new. It is a repetition of what the Lord has taught us. He has taught us to be good, as I already told you. In your family, you are good. In your workplace, you are good. In your, uh, in your duty, you are good. And, and uh, in the end, you are cheerful and you are God's children. Let us pray. Lord, you are a wonderful teacher. We are all students, Lord. You are our wonderful guru. We are your disciples. We have to learn a lot from your mouth, Lord. Help us to open up our mind with the wisdom to listen to you 
and to shine out not only after our death, even here on our earth, in our earthly life. May we shine out like a star that you do in our life. Amen. Accept Almighty Father these gifts of bread and wine which now the priest is offering for us before thy shrine but soon the world shall make them his body and his blood the sacrifice renewing once offered on the root pray brethren that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father may the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church O God who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offerings of the law accept we pray this sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you blessed the gifts of Abel so that what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, for in goodness you created man, and when he has justly condemned, in mercy you redeemed him through Christ. Through him the angels praise as we acclaim, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed a holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy day for these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be guaranteed to one by the Holy Spirit. 
Bring our Lord your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity together with Francis the Pope and Peter Machado Archbishop and all the clergy. Remember your servant Michael, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also, brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them to the light of your face. And as you know, as all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, St. Joseph, our spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who are pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Jesus taught us to call God our Father. We have the courage to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who set your apostles' peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, Grant us Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say a word. When the kindness of our God was revealed in Jesus, with compassion and with love were we born. In the spirit of that love, life abounds with thankfulness for the gift we know in Jesus the Christ. May the grace of We shall be for all, all that we have seen, known and loved with eyes of faith, shall be woven into life, never to die. May the grace of God be.
graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. I would like to acknowledge the presence of Father Patrick from Rosarian Congregation, who is here on his way back to uh, his native here in Bangalore, and he'll be back to Tamil Nadu is where he's working. So we thank him and uh, appreciate his presence. Put your hands together. Father Patrick from Rosarian Congregation. The Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. On may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go, the Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We have five to six liters of milk fresh milk from our uh, kavya cow and the daughter is ovia <laughs> so last three months she delivered and milk has been supplied every morning when the people come i would be happy if some of you either four or five people regularly come in the morning bring your container take one one and a half liter whatsoever you want and uh, until i'm here the cow also will be here. So it will take a month, so the cow will be here. So you can have a supply of milk for one month. The rupees is just 45 rupees a liter, and you can bring your uh, container and take it. It's a very fresh, good one, organic. <laughs> 